What's up, nerds? My name is Try, and welcome back to Stories Untold. We are going to jump right into episode 4. I just finished recording episode 3, and I'm super excited to see how this ends. Uh, looks like we might have the chat commands again. I think that's enough of that for now. What? You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Ah! It's a okay, show? come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. Okay, I'm not in control. I'm in a wheelchair. This place must be starting to feel like home to you. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. Observation. Right there. Just in here. Ah, light in my face. Okay, are we through in the next room? Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. Good night. All right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? So I'm Mr. Asian. Put record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject. 12-19-86-23. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. Hmm. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. Weird. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. I don't want to. Your mind, it's like a conscious black box. Oh. I can show you your memory. Look into it. That's terrible. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. You were isolated from the rest of the world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily. Coma. Encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. No, oh. Anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610 FM. You can't miss it. This is cool.
Report of traffic accident. 20 F fatal accident. Arrived on scene, discovered two cars that had been involved in a near head on collision. Mr. Asian found lying down outside his vehicle with head injuries, and ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in collision. Driver with the blue sedan, Mr. Hennings was found dead on arrival. It was noticed that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and an empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asian was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan as being clearly out of control, in which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asian's passenger was his sister. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years. Alright, so we got 20 F tech fatal accident. Um, the last one was out of control. The middle one is empty whiskey. No, I wanted to enter. Sorry. There we go. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. NS1 is the officer. It's not like it. At all. I've worked with Officer Henning for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He was a father, a husband, he was fine. No way he caused this. The door sent slut. This Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. Plunging in the darkness, the light flickers on. So does it make sense to you? Step out in the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. All of your episodes were recorded on tape. This is the fourth. You tense up. Someone else is here. You wash your hands, but in this place it feels pointless. Hehe. <laughs> What am I looking for? Office? I wasn't expecting this to turn into an actual horror game. Grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Sterile observation. Surgery, home care, coma ward. Maybe the coma room? Day room. Spent most waking moments in here. The only video they have. Some horror compilation. Trash. Number puzzle. You only caught a glimpse of the room. I guess that's why there's no detail in here. That's fair. Sometimes they make you watch your past sessions to see what really happened. He has quite an imagination, Mr. Asian. I guess it's from the shows he's been watching. This time he described a, an a and &E visit as a government conspiracy, uh, some sort of lab. It's, uh, it's interesting stuff, and it's obviously pure fiction. But I guess it's just his way of coping for now. We'll see how we progress in future sessions. Interesting. Um... Oh, here's another one. Today was the first session with Mr. James Asian. Although I fear it will certainly not be his last. When asked about events that have happened in the past, he confused fact and fiction and told us a story about a computer game that was talking to him. I think he was back at his own house. 
mum and dad's house, and he always stalked him out of room with a red X, one he couldn't get in. I don't know what any of this means or what it's going to do with the accident, but I guess uh, some more sessions will maybe reveal that. We're going to try again tomorrow. Found it. You honestly believe that Hennings was drunk at the wheel, and not this little shit? If he wakes up, when he wakes up, I want answers. Until then, you handle it. You write it up. I'm out. Weird. Ah, I did. We found him lying there sobbing while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the, what the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be hit. Oof. Maybe I knew I fucked up and I didn't want to, I didn't know how to deal with it. People don't respond, usually don't respond well in panic situations. Can I leave? dread in the pit of your stomach. Yes, I do. I don't like this. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. Oh, is this a I'm surgery no room? Pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Um... Oh, I didn't turn it on. Ugh. Come on, 100 joules. Clear. Charging up full to 10. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charged at 10. <laughs> 200 joules. Keep the charge at 10. I'm Let's trying. go. Clear. <laughs> this is stressful. <laughs> Like there's not okay, actually we have a time a limit. Of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360. Charge full. <laughs> Come on, 360. Hurry. Um, I don't think there's actually a time limit. Clear. Well, would you look at that? Seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's get it going now, please. Uh, do I turn you off? Charge ready. There we go. Yeah, I had to turn that off. Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. The drill, please. It's on! Uh, how did I... Oh, I didn't turn that off. Mr. Asian. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax while we go through these next steps. I hate that. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Oh God! Imagine. Ugh. Oh. Hi. Hey, we're back at the house. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize the soul. 
The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of mom and dad. There's a door to the hall. I turned the caps lock off. He pushed through the crowd into the hallway. Hallway is welcome as ever. Only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the wall. Half finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Uh, read banner. Bon voyage, James. Finally, not the family disappointment. Kitchen? They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. Kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which is proudly on the table, though no one is eating it. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. Look at Jen. Sister is calling you over to talk. Go to Jen. You push through, apologizing over and over to get to Jennifer. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you enjoying the party. Yes. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Get a drink. Pour Jen a drink and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Yes. That way, yes, that you've packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. Might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. It's gonna miss you. You're gonna miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared in the crowd. He left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. Okay. You pour in down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Let's see. Um, can we go in the utility room? So we couldn't before. Can we now? You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks. Collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Pick bottle. Pick up the whiskey in the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. The whiskey in hand you take in the room around you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drinks in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. You kitchen? Head back in the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. Stumble out of the utility room into the kitchen. This one really strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Go to hall. Go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen. Covered in blood. Oh no, what happened? Talk to Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Go to Jen. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Talk to Jen. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Talk. Sorry, I don't understand. Look at Jen. Oh, I hate that. Why? I'm oh, sorry. we're back in the hospital. I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Zation, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Uh, what? In the hallway, something had stopped you in your track. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. 
She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. No. Uh... Take her home? I really shouldn't drive home. Don't know what you're trying to use. Um... Let's go back by the people. You're sure your keys are in the living room? Living room is a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat in chairs having civilized conversation. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring the drink at the drinks cabinet. Look around. Coffee table, drinks cabinets, one chair is overflowing with jackets and coats. Probably drove here. Search for all the jackets and coats while you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pockets. You grab both. Go to the hall. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Yes. Uh, go to car. Use door. Leave. You open the front door and walk out in the freezing night. Cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house, and the car sits at the front of the house. Use key. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing! As you fumble around with the seatbelt, your sister opens up the car gloves box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for you when you return. Station number did amps, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Turn the key in the ignition, the car roars to life. That's not really a roar. Drive? Car squeals, but stays stationary. <laughs> Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving you a wide-eyed stare. Release brake. Very hesitantly, release the handbrake. Drive. Put the car in gear and pull out the driveway like a first-time driver. You really should be driving. Stop. You I am driving. Very drunk, on the road towards town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Um, ask Jen? She groans and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Left. Go left. Turn the car left at the junction and accelerator off. Come that you're in the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. Feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Go slow. Four. Not what really happened though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you. Crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. Lower. Try the react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside joins the inside. The James, whole world around you begins to scream. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Get out. You can't move. The seatbelt is still in place. Uh, remove seat belt. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump to the roof of the car. Get out. Squeeze through the wreckage and fall on knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is sobbing. A blue car is smashed into the side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You're standing holding your whiskey. In your dad's note and flashing night, the store post reads, read note. The note, always changing, now reads, get through this, James, I don't care if 
you want to or not. Um, go to car. What car? The other blue car or yours? Blue car. Ah! Blue car. Door is jammed. We don't have time for messing around like this, James. Uh, what if whiskey in blue car? The lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then, very deliberately, spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence into his passenger seat. That's terrible! A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash light in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Silhouette is a weird word. Sorry, you're not making any sense. Go to silhouette. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. He falls to the ground at his feet. You. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident. That poor man. Me. You have to remember. Dude, you fucked it was up. All your fault. It was all my fault. Oh god. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and you wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. It was all my fault. It was definitely all my fault. Say it. Tell them. So I was watching remotely. I don't know if anyone else is ever with him. Listen to yourself. How does he make you watch it? How do I? It has to end, James. Do you not understand? Okay. She couldn't hit the hitbox. Well. I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect it'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on. Let's get you back to your ship. You true. I'll see you tomorrow. That's messed up. Uh, drinking and driving is never, ever okay. I don't care how okay you think you are. If you've drunk anything, do not get behind the wheel. Call somebody. Even if you think you're gonna get in trouble, it is better to try and ask for help than to hurt other people. Oh, this, I didn't realize this, this would have, I don't like that. Like, I know this is just a story, but this happens all the time. People drink, they drive, they ruin their lives, they ruin their family's life, they kill people. Innocent people get hurt, they get destroyed because of drunk driving. Please, 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 if you ever find yourself in that situation, don't do it. Don't get behind the wheel. Call... Call your family, call some friends, call an Uber if you can't afford it. If you have nothing else to do, call the police. Tell them you need a ride. You are drunk and you do not want to drive. Someone will help you, I promise. Don't ever put yourself or anyone else in danger by getting behind the wheel when you've been drinking. 
That is not okay, no matter what you think. This is a really good game though, I really liked it. Games Asian, sessions one through four. Yeah. So, that was kind of a heavy ending to the game. But please, don't ever put yourself in that situation. But with that, we are done with Stories Untold. We've reached the end. Um, please let me know what you thought down below. I really like this. I hate the ending, but I really liked it. This was pretty good. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know. And if there's anything else you want to see me play, Ooh. Always in the endings. Always in the outros. If there's anything else you want to see me play, please let me know. I really appreciate y'all's input. Um, but that is it for the series. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next game. But until next time, please, seriously, don't drink and drive. Please. I love you. Bye.